Need Pokemon Go PvP coaching? Well, I'm on Metify, so click the link in the video description to take you right to my page. What's up guys? Got a very exciting video today. Ever since I started playing Pokemon Go PvP, I always watched Kang do the 75 unique Pokemon challenge to start off the season. Just biding my time waiting for that one day where I too finally had 75 Pokemon to play in Great League. Well, that day has come. The 75 unique Pokemon challenge essentially is, so there's 25 games you can play each day. Each game uh, consists of a teams of team of three. If you use unique Pokemon, so no repeats in Pokemon, and use new team every game, that's 75 Pokemon. So uh, that's what I've done here. Let's get right into this video. There's not too much strategy to talk. Just excited to see how this goes. Well, I mean, I already saw how it goes. First team. I also changed the edit st editing style a little bit. So please let me know in the comments if you like this kind of thing. So first team, we have Hitmontop, Mew, and Celebi. Got a double mythical team here. Actually, all these teams are ABB teams because they're the easiest ones to put together in theory craft quickly. Uh, you'll notice that people I'm playing against also have some very weird Pokemon. That's because it is the first day and that's why these kinds of challenges are kind of suited for that. Um, my Mew has Snarl, not Shadow Claw, but either way, this Aqua Tail shouldn't do too much damage. Able to tank it up very nicely, charge up a little bit more and then go for this Wild Charge. I thought about going for the Surf just because generally Players at very low ratings like to shield everything, but they actually let it through. So, uh, able to build up to the Surf here versus the Soul Rock, and despite being debuffed, at least Confusion is resisted, so my Mew doesn't get taken out quite yet. I'm gonna get two Surfs off, dealing quite a bit of damage and stripping the last shield off of the Soul Rock. So, all that remains is to come in with the Celebi and farm down. I will shield and move. I'm not really sure what Soul Rock runs, Rock Slide, so. Uh, would deal quite a bit of damage and then there's a Skarmory in the back and luckily it's actually Steel Wing because if it was Air Slash I think I actually might lose this game throw the Psychic um, but in reality I'm probably better off swapping to my Hitmontop and throwing this uh, close combat anyways yeah my opponent seems to have disconnected but that's day one battles I guess yeah, the point of this video is not to show, well, actually, there's some pretty high-level gameplay in, in a couple of the last sets, but it's more to just have some fun, look at what other people are running on day one. Now we have Shadow Hitmonchan with Pidgeot and Noctowl in the back, um, and they swap right out into their Toxic Croak. Pidgeot does not have to shield this Mud Bomb. Could have been a Sludge Bomb, and then they just quit. So, we don't even get to see the Noctowl, don't even get to see... The shiny new Shadow Ball, which I did actually TM. I only TM'd a couple Pokemon for this. Uh, I got Shadow Ball in the Noctowl and of course Incinerate in the Macargo. So we have another uh, double flyer team. I wanted to run it back. So we have Primeape, Shadow Golbat, and regular Charizard. In comes G-Fisk. So this is a bit of a weird switch. You don't usually expect G-Fisk getting swapped into um, your Primeape. They're running Muddy Water, so that's only four Mud Shots. I'm gonna throw Night Slash here. And then another Night Slash to try and either burn their last shield or prevent my Primate from taking too much damage. So in this case, it's a Muddy Water. So I'm not going to shield it anyways. I know my Primate has some really good matchups in the back here. But I feel like with a two shield advantage, um, Charizard and Golbat probably have a pretty good matchup against whatever's in the back. Uh, unfortunately, it is it is an Electric type. I didn't switch. It was ABB, so I did get kind of trapped in the back here. And they go for the Brick Break. So this might be a single move Raichu here. I'm just going to take it out with a Shadow Ball. Or at least get it very close. Because once this Pokemon is gone, Obstagoon is going to have a very tough time. It's already at about half HP. Primate can come in and clean it up. But Golbat should be able to just Poison Fang this thing down. And obviously Charizard still hasn't played. I think that's a fire spin Charizard, I want to guess. I'm not sure. I built it for a cup and it was extremely underwhelming. So I figured I'd get some of these worst Pokemon gone in the first couple of sets here. Uh, that's why you're seeing some weird stuff. Neo Queen, we have Shadow Beedrill actually lead here. I'm playing double dragon. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go straight for the drill run here, get a shield for sure. But then it's a weird bait game versus Neo Queen. So in this case, they throw right away. So I'm okay if Beedrill goes down. But unfortunately, this is probably a very bad decision. Considering I now have an ABB team where I've not swapped out at all. And not only do I come in with the Pokemon that doesn't resist poison. But I'm going to let this Poison Fang through. And I still have to throw my move. So I just essentially just like sacrifice my Dragoner's HP for no reason. And then I'm going to swap right away into uh, 
my Flygon here. It's got a decent matchup versus Sableye. But Metacham is a bit tough. I think if I did come in with the um, the Flygon earlier, I would have had a chance. But this is a real team. I was not expecting real teams in my in my game or er, set one games. So my opponent bringing the full anti fighting squad here with Nido Queen, Metacham, and, and Sableye. So I shield the Power Up Punch, which is unfortunate because I had to shield regardless. Um, but because they have Power Up Punch, they're going to be able to get to this move. I won't be able to farm down and get to an Aqua Tail, which would have been the win con here but it was not meant to be well, there's a loss lost in the first set of the season usually not a good sign but we'll see how it goes ready steel into skarmy right now we're running skarm double mud boy i'm gonna swap into whiskash here because i think it's a little bit better of a switch I'm gonna throw a uh, mud bomb at the incoming zangu so this team very weak to fighting leads and i'm gonna no shield here it's likely a night slash night slash does not do very much damage Zangus is very squishy, so they do need to land a close combat to take up my Whiskash. Even this next one, they'll need to land a close combat here if they do want to keep Switch. Now, honestly, Switch is nice, but I'm liking having Shield Advantage here. I thought I could pull off the two Shield Advantage, but my opponent's smart enough to go close combat. Um, so I'm going to come with a Skarmory. And Skarmory matchup versus Registeel is not bad. It's not that bad. Um, either way, they come with Talonflame. I was planning on staying in versus the Registeel. But because they come in with the Talonflame, I'm going straight to Swampert. Swampert beats the remaining two Pokemon here. Especially when they don't shield the Talonflame. And then, yeah. Running Earthquake as well in the Shadow Swampert. So I could just go for a double Earthquake here versus the Registeel to guarantee that win. Either way, four wins in that first set. Pretty average start, I guess, for, for Season 10 here. This next game, we have Umbreon, Quillfish, and Tentacruel. So now we got some double Water Poisons here. And we have Neo Queen lead. I'm gonna swap right away. Because we do have some answers to this in the back. I could have tanked a Poison Fang first and got some energy in Umbreon. That would have also been acceptable. Um, but they tank the Aqua Tail and then switch into Vaporeon. This is not the answer that they wanted for Quillfish. In fact, this bodes extremely well for Tentacruel in the back, given that their best answer for a water poison was a water with only water type moves. So Quillfish is gonna be able to grab a shield here with Sludge Wave, and they're gonna be forced to throw another Aqua Tail. Which is completely fine. In this case, I'm actually going to come with Tentacruel. Because I resist all these moves as well. I don't have to worry about saving it till the end. We're going to farm all the way down here. Get a bunch of Acid Sprays. And if I can take this out um, and then take out one more Pokemon. Okay, so in comes Celebi. I swap a little bit slow because I did not expect someone else to be running Celebi at all. But this is perfect for Umbreon. Umbreon's going to get a lot of use out of this. And it's not like... Umbreon doesn't have play against the other Pokemon either, so we're gonna tank another Seed Bomb here. Oh no, okay. I decided to throw a 4 out to tank another Seed Bomb. Deciding I probably want to stay a little bit healthier, but they shield anyways. So, gonna throw another Foul Play. Take out that Celebi. And in comes Vaporeon. Knew they were gonna get to an Aqua Tail. I mean, it is what it is. Not gonna shield that at all. And because of that, we'll farm up a little bit more. I swap into Tentacruel unfortunately catch a move which is an earth power so i have to shield it and just land the pump here all i know is that taking out this neo queen is kind of just my win condition here so throwing a huge nuke definitely worth it in this case i'm just going to keep poison jabbing down because i figured this would be the fastest way to end the game but my opponent has other plans throws that aqua tail and the poison jab sneak through is going to end it yep that's uh that, that was a much closer game though these games are getting longer and longer. Right now, oh yeah, okay, I'm gonna do something very degenerate here. We're running Diggersby Double Charm, and I kind of feel bad for my opponents, but this is the best way to get two Charmers out of the way without having to run a bunch of different degenerate teams. Unfortunately, hard counter on the lead, and then a hard counter on the switch, and if they have a Metacham in the back, it's gonna be hard counter in the back too. So, um... So I actually don't throw any moves here, because I don't want to stall the switch clock anymore i just want to farm all the way up i want to get to 100 if they swap into something that diggers can deal some damage to i don't mind throwing some moves and it's a good thing i did because it's not a metacham in the back it's a venusaur so we're going to grab a shield there kind of a little bit of a risky situation that i'm in but these charms they don't do that much damage and venusaur is at two moves now so because of this i'm gonna have to take that sludge bomb and save both shields for Diggersby here. So, despite having a hard counter lead and a hard counter switch, they're 
backline Pokemon beats all three of my Pokemon. So it's kind of just a team effort to try and take down this Venusaur. And it's a good thing I didn't switch when I, uh, or I didn't throw that move at Bastiodon. Most players would have thrown a play rough. I've never seen someone just not throw a move there. And they would have lost that game. Just because Diggersby went to being able to get the farm it needed to take out the Venusaur. All right, this game we've got Obscoon Double Ghost, the team I used to run, and there is an astonished Drifblim. This Drifblim is astonishingly weak. Uh, there's a low hanging fruit right there, but it does have a hat. Very nice. Um, so I, I don't know why I didn't throw my Night Slash before their Icy Wind. I don't have the chance at two shotting. I'm gonna throw both these Night Slashes anyways, and I gotta swap into my Gengar at some point here. So I'm gonna wait for another Icy Wind to come out tank that move and then i'll swap into my gengar i can try and farm this thing down but they actually swap at the same time as snorlax kind of unfortunate except it's not a lick snorlax this is a zen headbutt snorlax that i'm up against here so all the worst moves possible on these pokemon zen headbutt and astonish are probably two of the worst moves in the game uh, i'm gonna go to shadow punch here i'm not gonna be able to make it a sludge bomb grab the last shield and then in comes obscune to farm all the way down um it only double resists zen headbutt whereas it triple resists lick so really maybe it was a good move set versus obscure but they obviously would have reached a superpower at that point with lick whereas they were not close with zen headbutt in comes needle queen their final pokemon obscune not a great matchup versus needle queen but when you've been able to farm an entire snorlax and some of a drifloon or Drifblim, you don't really have to worry about it too much. And they're going to come back on the Drifblim, and it's just going to be Shadow Claws all the way down here. I just realized my Haunter and Gengar have their bait moves on the, the opposite sides of each other. That's kind of concerning. Okay, I forgot to edit this out, but I got dodged here. So we are going to skip a little bit ahead. Running a Bomb of Snow, Double Water. Uh, a classic, I guess. Usually you have Azumarill, but you know, I want to save my Azumarill for the later sets. I don't know what Luxray runs, but it just had a community day. I completely forgot. It's Psychic Fangs. I definitely did not need to shield here. I think the worst case it, it can do is Crunch. In this case, unfortunately, the IVs are good enough that we'll get to another Psychic Fangs, which I'm not going to shield because it's such a terrible move. In comes Shadow Scum Tank, and I'm going to come with Cast Form. Remember, it's ABB, so you want to switch at some point. And Cast Form is just going to start to deal some damage here against the Skun Tank. I don't really care so much about shielding my Cast Form. I essentially have another Cast Form. Oh, that feeling when you just eat your words. Um, yeah. So I essentially had another Cast Form in the back. I'm not really sure what the purpose of shielding there was. I guess I knew I could Water Gun down the uh, Skun Tank at that point. So we'd get to see those third Pokemon for sure. Um, but luckily it is a G Fisk. So they're not going to like what they see in the back here at all um because out comes a lone mola and it's kind of game over there's nothing that g fist can do against this tanky tanky fish i'm not even sure what kind of fish it is but yeah so you can survive two earthquakes in comes shadow scum tank i swap into a bomb stone i think i could have just farmed down with a loma mola anyways but I was unsure about the energy, decided to just finish this off with a bomb stone instead. We're gonna pick up another win. Uh, I wonder what team is next. Yeah, slowly getting these uh, achievement, not achievements, but the level up rewards things. This time we're gonna run, ooh, Marowak into Empoleon, not a great lead. Marowak, Polyrath, and, um, <laughs> oh man. And Zwilus, and they're running Metal Claw. So actually, this was a great matchup for Marowak to stay in, resisting the Steel typing. But instead, I kind of misread the moveset there. And it's a Flash Cannon coming out from the Sympoleon, a full Steel moveset from the Sympoleon. This is Marowak's dream. But unfortunately, I swapped out. Uh, Polyrath is going to take Switch Advantage and Shield Advantage. Unfortunately, there is a Wigglytuff in the back. I got to wait for the Switch Timer here because they did not switch, and I did. So Marowak is also not the best answer for Wigglytuff here. Um, if you don't shield in the, in the zero shield, you barely win. But I'm going to shield. This charge moves deal quite a bit of damage. So um, 
And luckily they swap out to the Bronzong. This means my Zwilus has play. So we're gonna put Zwilus in. I probably shouldn't have even thrown that move. I should have saved my energy for Wigglytuff. But that's okay. I'm gonna see, save my shields for Wigglytuff instead. Zwilus is gonna be able to farm down this heavy slam Bronzong and fire off a body slam into Wigglytuff, which is gonna do some pretty minor damage. Like one damage because they shielded it. And um, it's all about making sure that Marowak is able to take down this Wigglytuff in the end. And it should be fine. Because I still have a shield, and those fire spins deal almost as much damage as those charms are dealing since they're resisted. But yet, yet another win this set. I think that's five. Yeah, that was five wins this set. So a 9 1 start to the season using some pretty random teams i guess with 75 unique pokemon it's kind of hard to build a bunch of teams but i believe this is the grasshole set i decided to run a lot of grasshole this is an homage to what originally got me started in the first place we're running shadow vile plume zangoose and bastard on here so we lost the lead very hard to shadow caesar that's not good for anyone on this team and then in comes neo queen i decide to no shield this Thinking that maybe I could still get to another Night Slash, but unfortunately I can't. I take zero advantages out of that matchup. I probably should have played a little bit more shields down. But uh, unfortunately they're going to come back with the Caesar and I won't be able to switch yet. And Shadow Vileplume does not tank these bullet punches very well. Night Slash is going to... X's are going to come in and I'm going to swap right out to Bastion and there's the triple hard counter team. We're out of there. So... Unfortunate start to the, the grass hole set, but you know what? I've got some more grass hole stuff. We have Shadow Torterra. Normal type plus steel type yet again with Licky Licky and Provo Pass in the back. I'm gonna swap out of this Altaria into Licky Licky. I'm gonna shield up because I'm kind of like they're not switching out. So it makes me feel like I might have to try and win switch here. Um, but they actually do swap and catch my second body slam. I like never throw like that too. So it just uh, Kind of just <laughs> is like a, a Little bit of a middle finger to me right there um, We have an earthquake coming out. That's obviously gonna take out the licky licky, but we also have the best razor leafer against glaring stun fist that is um, Shadow Torterra. It's ground and grass typing is very unique in the fact that it resists both rock and ground, and it's one of the only Pokemon in the entire game to do so. Especially Pokemon Go. Go into the Probo Pass, and in comes Altaria, and in the back it is Galvantula. There's actually a chance. I thought there's no way Probo Pass with a shield disadvantage would have any shot in this game. But I'm going to no shield this first one, knowing that they get a lot of value out of getting a lunge off first. So I'm going to no shield that lunge. Gonna go straight for the rock slide here. I think if they just went straight discharge, they would have won. So, um, and then once again, go for another rock slide. And they throw, that's fine. Stalling the clock more. I know I'm gonna have to try and go for a catch or a snipe on this thing. So I go for the snipe. Unfortunately, they're, my opponent's reaction is very fast. They swap out right away before I'm evil, even able to get my move off. And then I got to farm up a little bit more versus this Altaria because this Galv is very close to a move. And we're going to get to double rock slide and just pray this Galv doesn't have a move already. And it looks like they did not have a move. So Pro Pass going to be able to get this rock slide off and KO this Galv. So despite losing lead and losing switch very, very hard, still able to pull off a win. The classic grass normal steel team. Still works, still works. Azumarillie, this is what we love to see with Shadow Grottle. Now we got Snorlax and Shadow Mawile in the back. In comes Sableye, and I know this matchup like the back of my hand. Just got a shield once and we can farm all the way down. After that, we'll be able to swap out Snorlax and, or swap into Snorlax, and then Azu will have to get realigned onto the Grottle at the end. So we'll see what they bring in. It's Trevenant, so swap into Snorlax. We got two Trevenant answers in the back, and we'll see what they want to do here. These licks are really starting to hurt. I get a seed bomb off, but it looks like it's going to take more than two seed bombs to take down the Snorlax. So they swap out and now I have them exactly where I want them. They're going to try and farm down with uh, Azu, which is probably their best play. But these body slams are going to start to hurt. And I still do have a shield for my Grottle. And I believe 
I have a move on my Grottle as well. So I'll be able to get this last Body Slam off. I'll let the Azu take down um, my Snorlax, go with the Grottle, get that Body Slam off. Bubble goes through. I thought they were at 100 energy already, but maybe not. And then I'll shield up here just to get a decent amount of damage off on this Azu. But they'll switch, and that's fine too. Um, Mawile will just be able to take down this Trevenant, and then Azu would have to be able to take down the Mawile, which it cannot unless it's running Hydro Pump and empties its energy, and then Grottle can take it down. So my opponent saves us both a little bit of time, and GG's out. Now we're kind of out of Razor Leafers for the most part, so we have Grass. Uh, we have a charge move based Grass Hole here, um, which I guess at this point isn't even really Grass Hole. At Superior, in comes Skarmory, and we have the perfect answer to Skarmory in the back. Shadow Magnezone. So they throw right away. That's fine. The Sky Attack does not hurt that much. Even though Shadow Magnezone is one of the squishiest Pokemon in all of Great League, it's got two types that resist flying. So Skarmory is kind of dead in the water here. One uh, Mirror Shot will deal a ton of damage to Skarmory. In comes Surfesh. Obviously, you're going to throw the Mirror Shot. If I was able to fast move deny there, I could get two Mirror Shots off. But instead, they take me out. Uh, but I grab the shield. So that's important. I want to be able to stop this Surfetch from being able to beat my Superior. Obviously, it has a great matchup against what I have in the back here. Um, I have to shield up for sure. Can't have my Lickitung taking like 90% of its damage or health and damage. And then they stay and try and take down my Superior. But my Superior will get to one final Frenzy Plant to take out this Surfetch. And I'll be able to swap into Lickitung. And as long as Lickitung wins the 1v0 shield, which I'm sure it does versus like 90% of Pokemon, this one is a win. And it's an Azu, so. This is definitely something you win the 0-1 sh or 1 to 0 shield in. You'd even win the, win the zeros, you'd win the ones, you'd win everything. And I think they left there. So they've also left me to finish off this game by myself. With a 10 second long power whip. Yeah, so Grass will kind of revenging itself here after that first early loss. I think there's one more game left. But that's not all the grass, uh, the grass normal steals we can run, that's for sure. We have Tropius, normal cast form, and Galarian Stunfisk now as a pseudo ABB team. Unfortunately, I don't have an answer to Galarian Stunfisk itself. Except for my Galarian Sunfisk. So, because there's a taking a little bit of damage, I throw Earthquake and I lose CMP. My Galarian Sunfisk IVs are very bad. Um, so, there's must be worse. And I've never seen an Earthquake do that much damage to Galarian Sunfisk. So, they shield up smartly. And now, I'm kind of left without any hope at all. Um, at this point, I kind of have to bring in Tropius because the matchup for normal Casper is even worse. Just because Weather Ball Rock is not a good move unless you're getting to use it at least neutrally. And I farm up a little bit more. Who knows uh, where I'll need to get this energy from. Throw the Leaf Blade, take out the Glaring Sunfisk. In comes Skarmory. So I swap out here. And in comes the Azu again. And at this point, it's going to be a long, tough game for this little pair of balls. It's got to take out two of the biggest meta beasts in the entire game by itself. My Tropius has about 2 HP. Gonna shield up that first move. Just an Ice Beam. Unfortunately, just an Ice Beam. Still deals a decent amount of damage. Gonna throw an Energy Ball here. Take out the Azu. And then now it's just all a matter of taking out this Skarmory. So, a bit easier said than done. I have to shield up even Sky Attacks here, I think. Gonna charge up. Throw some Weather Balls. Get the fast move Denial off. Um... And there's still a long ways to go. It doesn't really look like there's really a win condition in sight, but there's one more. It's the catch. We're going to throw two more and swap right on the sky attack. They throw right away. Tropius is able to just routinely live that. Cast form is going to try and get to a third weather ball here. Sorry, looks like a fourth weather ball maybe. And then one more hex with the fast move denial failing. Hopefully this weather ball is enough. Because if it's not, this air slash that I go through is going to KO and it's enough. Normal cast form is able to take down um, Azu and Skarmory by itself. Honestly, pretty good performance from it. We're going to grab another 4-1, I believe. But 
yeah, so changing leads every game. I didn't really notice a difference in the leads I was playing. Felt like there were some good leads and some bad leads. So I don't know what that says about anything. In this case, I'm playing um, A9 Double Ghost. This is one of my viewers, Slutter Cypher. Uh, actually was forced me to play this team. So figured I would give it a shot. We had a not great lead, not a bad lead though. Sir Fetched versus A9. And in comes Galarian Sunfisk versus Sableye. This obviously is not the best matchup for... Uh, for Sableye when it's at half HP. It does win most even shields versus Stunfisk when it's a bit higher HP, but unfortunately I get mud shot down and I'm in a bit of trouble here. You have to come with the Jellicent, unfortunately. There's a Surfetch still, so I do need an energy advantage on this Jellicent. Otherwise, it's not gonna be good. Um, so, what I'm going to do is going to swap into my A9. I'm just trying to load up energy so that this Surfesh kind of has nowhere to go. I'm going to throw my Weather Ball before they get to that um, Rock Slide. And then I'm just going to throw these Weather Balls at Surfesh. Fairy Typing on Alolan Ninetales is very useful to resist some of this counter damage. Sneak a move through, which is great. So I can just shield once. And they Night Slash, which is very weird. They should leaf blade unless they're not running it. So maybe they are, are actually running something like close combat or brave bird. A9 is able to take out the cert fetched, and then in the back we have an Azumarill. So I'm gonna get to get this dazzling gleam. Dazzling gleam does quite a bit of damage. So does shadow ball, which I do have one store. So I'm gonna switch, get the shadow ball off while I can, and then just try and farm this thing down. I'm not gonna shield my Jellicent because it's. It'd be much easier for my A9 to get to a move. And it won't even need to. It uses Psychic Powers to force my opponent to top left instead. Uh, but yeah, that one looked pretty unwinnable for a little bit there too. Let's see what the next game looks like. Oh yeah, that's right. We have more Grass. Well, Shadow Victory Bell rearing its ugly head. This time I've got Double Psychic in the back. In comes Scrafty. So I swap to try and catch a foul play. I know it's a super effective against Deoxys. But it's an acid spray so yeah a bit of a weird one i do have to shield this time because if it is a foul play it will ko but they know that so they get another acid spray off um in comes jellicent and i'm just gonna throw this thunderbolt which grabs a shield and then I'm gonna throw another thunderbolt which grabs a shield and they're just trying to farm all the way down which is fine um, I'm almost at a leaf blade, but because of the lag, I'm not able to throw it. And you see me click it, so I clicked the leaf blade button. I assumed I was CMP tied, but guess what? I was not CMP tied. So this Jellicent will get two moves off before my victory bell will be able to, and I'm gonna lose this game instead of what would have been an extremely, extremely easy win. So even in season 10, some things have not changed. Lag is still there, um, desync is still there. They actually bubble beam me. I don't know why they didn't go straight for the Shadow Ball. I think they're just trying to BM me. So, in comes the Needle Queen. Now that I'm debuffed, I can't actually take it out. It's the, the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. Yeah, this could have all been avoided, I think, with uh, just throwing that Leaf Blade. If the game let me see my moves at all, or respected the fact that I pressed my button. If one of those two things happen, then... It would be okay. But instead, we're going to lose it. Poor Shadow Victory Bell. Deserves so much better. Instead, we got some more Grass Hole. Um, this time, we're running out of normal types. So we got Double Steel. This is bad, though. Cherim Sunny is also not very powerful. I felt like it was always one of the weakest Razor Leafers. But I just had it built, right? So, um, Melmetal is going to try and win Switch versus Trevenant here. Obviously, this is not a great matchup considering that Shadow Ball one shots and Rock Slide two shots. So we're going to let it go, hoping for the bait as our win con. But they don't bait. I'm going to have to shield here. Just kidding. Um, and then they swap back into Noctowl. And the hard swap into Noctowl is good. But unfortunately, Registeel is not as hard of a counter to these flying types as the rock types are. So something like Bastion or Provo Pass would be much better here. Versus this Noctowl, you just be able to farm all the way down. Instead of Registeel, obviously cannot farm. They're going to get to another Shadow Ball. 
And at this, this point, I'm just going to try and farm to around 100 energy. I got to keep the Registeel healthy, though, so I do shield there. I was a bit scared there was going to be some sort of fast move down from Trevenant. Because to be this Trevenant... Oh, yeah, this is rough. I was scared they'd bring the Trevenant back, so that's why I was thinking about switching. But after they brought in G-Fisk, it probably was better not to switch and just tank the move. But it's not going to really matter if they overcharged. Actually, no, they didn't. But all they need is a rock slide here. Uh, which will be enough to take out Cherim. I'm going to throw a Weather Ball. Just to see how much damage it does. But honestly, it doesn't do that much. And I don't know why running Dazzling Gleam is my second move. I think pretty obviously Solar Beam is a good option here. I guess maybe it was for Altaria back in the day. By the way, Rock Slide comes through, Cherim's down. And that's two losses in a row. That's very sad. That's the longest loss streak of the season so far. But we'll see if we can bring it back. Meganium, another grass team. Yeah, you guys are probably tired of this. Don't worry, this is the last set where I'm running all this stuff. I just had so many grass Pokemon built. I wonder why. And so many rock Pokemon and so many normal Pokemon built. So, um, for Alligator swapping to <laughs> Regirock, honestly, kind of scary, but Regirock does a ton of damage like this surprisingly close they're forced to throw as well and in comes the ice beam so good thing they actually didn't farm down i would not have shielded my meganium i didn't really know what for alligator runs either way we're gonna farm back down with meganium in comes the fire type we'll see if they know what meganium's moveset is throw the earthquake here try and grab a last shield and i do and we're gonna catch whatever this move is on mick cargo hopefully it's not a fighting move flamethrower perfect so Double resisted. And they swap into Jolteon. Oh, and this poor Jolteon, though. Yeah, Stone Edge is going to take it right out. New Macargo charges very fast. I honestly think it's, like, actually decent Pokemon. I just don't know what I would be running it with. And I don't know if we can hang in Open Great League with all the Asmorals and stuff like that. But maybe Remix. Maybe Remix is the, the place for it to go. Oh wait, maybe there's one more grass. Yeah, so another grass, but it's Trevenant. We got the double low and rock boys in the back. In comes Metacham. It's kind of not what you want to see at all with this. Maybe the only thing worse is Galarian Stunfisk. Um, but we're going to get to a Stone Edge. And we're actually going to get to another Stone Edge. So IVs do matter here. This Stone Edge, they will, are required to shield or they lose switch. And I'm going to come in with the Trevenant. And just pray. That they don't have Ice Punch. So if they don't have Ice Punch, Psychic will use a lot more of their energy. And they'll actually have to use two Psychics to take out Trevenant. So I'm done shielding my Trevenant. It's not got a good lead matchup. I'm gonna come in with Alolan Golem. And you might think this game is over. You might think it's over. But they come in with Drapion instead of Lickitung. So I'm gonna shield up whatever this Drapion throws. It really does not matter if they get debuffs because one move is gonna... AOS anyways, I can go for the Rock Blast here. Because I can't debuff myself, the shield. I know I'm going to be shielding one more, so I just keep going. And then I have to hope a Rock Blast KOs. And then that two Wild Charges KO the uh, Lickitung. So I'm going to throw the Rock Blast. And then we're going to go up to two Wild Charges and a little bit. Get some extra damage off. And hopefully this will KO the Lickitung. This game looked like it was not winnable at all. But now we have a chance. That looked like it did a little bit more than half. So two Wild Charges is going to be enough. Alolan Golem going to be able to win this despite a Lickitung lead. And a Medicham counter switch into Trevenant and Alolan Graveler. Um, but yeah, only three wins this set. That's okay. Games are getting harder, right? You're playing against better and better people as time goes on. And this is the last set of the day. We're starting to get into the less spicy region. I've saved a lot of my meta picks for now. Here we have Empoleon, Mandibuzz, and Altaria. And oh, this game. So how can this matchup possibly go wrong? You're wondering. Well, that's exactly how Obscune gets the boost. And because of that, I have to shield another Night Slash. Which means I can no longer reliably win switch here without burning all of my shields uh actually i don't even think i can win switch at all if i let this knight slash through it'll likely almost ko and with the additional counters it definitely would so i'm having to hope that 
they just let this go. <laughs> they don't, obviously. Um, you yeah, have to come back in with Mana Buzz. And my Mana Buzz has a moveset from one of the faction's cups. It has no dark moves. We got Air, Air Slash, Aerial Ace, and Shadow Ball. Um, so in comes Clefable. And obviously, I'm going to switch. Um, but Empoleon versus Whiskash with the shield up, I'm thinking, this is not too bad. This is an okay matchup. But I was very wrong. Mud Bomb Charger is way too fast. Empoleon is not able to take down this Whiskash at all. So I actually shield here. I mean, we're all summoning a shield. My Amanda Buzz? No. And I need to get the most epic farm down of my entire life on this Whiskash for my Amanda Buzz. So now because I have this Shadow Ball Aerial Ace move set, I actually do have a chance. I fast move deny the charm, which Legends had it was not possible. And then we're going to go up and just barely get to that Aerial Ace this charm comes through and KOs us and the aerial just barely KOs so I'm still gonna win this game despite the boost there very scary game though and it's kind of funny how a moose set that was used for factions just because five of my opponent's Pokemon resisted dark ended up actually winning a game in open greatly but yeah don't use that move set ever all right next game in comes Bastion and honestly my opponent probably should have top lefted here this is maybe the hardest counter um, in the game to Bastion you can roll it with power up punches you can just farm all the way down you have so many options and scrafty with an energy advantage is kind of a monster especially when the pokemon's coming back in doesn't resist dark uh, that's metachan and just weakening weakening it up for the hypno is kind of all i can ask for here i should have probably went for the power up punch and then the foul play but honestly, I didn't know my moves well enough. I should have power up punch once first and then double foul play. I would be able to take them out. In comes Kavagrigus. And then, yeah, this this is maybe the most hard counter team I think I've ever seen in my life. Metacham into Hypno. And then, like, they probably... Th this is where, the like, people think the algorithm comes from. It's games like this, where you lead your Metacham that's met with a, a Hypno. And then you safe swap your Bastion, which is kind of questionable already. And it's met with a Scrafty. And then at the back you have a Cofagrigus, it's met with a, a Shift Tree, right? Like, stuff just happens. All right, okay, so Caesar lead. We're gonna come in with Drapion. I didn't even see what team I'm running here. Oh, we're running Nita Queen Double Dark. Very creative by me. I thought of that all by myself. Also, there's Triple Poison. Uh, so we have Nita Queen, Drapion, and Skuntank. I'm gonna grab Shield Advantage with Drapion over Swampert, because that's a thing you can do. And then Swampert honestly beats the whole team. So, a little bit tough. I have to come in with the Nido Queen. I'm going to no shield this. I didn't think it KO'd, to be honest. And come in with a Skun Tank, and yeah, it does KO, so I should have shielded it. But this Caesar kind of beats everything, anyways. And it's not even Night Slash, it's X Scissor Caesar. So, I'm not even going to get to see the third Pokemon unless they actually let this go, which they do. And we're still not, we're still not going to see the third Pokemon. Honestly, probably like a Skarmory or something. I don't think I had much of a shot there, but I didn't play it very well either. So, Venusaur into Jellicent. We have a Venusaur double water team here. Um, in comes Alolan Ninetales. Let the first one through. They always gleam first, though, so I probably should start shielding that if I'm, like, planning on shielding once. Anyways, uh, I'm just going to throw the play rough. Because <laughs> I expected them to shield, but they didn't. So instead, I am in Dazzling Gleam range once again. Azu's going to have to shield here to actually win this in the one shield. And then in comes Jellicent, I'm sure. Getting these play roughs off is nice. The damage is quite good. So if you put it in Vine Whip downrange, honestly, it's definitely better than having to throw a Frenzy Plant at it. But they're doing the right thing and just no shielding. I come in with my Pelipper to force the issue here. I don't want them just farming. So they go for the Shadow Ball. And then they go for a Bubble Beam. Yeah, they weren't at the Shadow Ball. And in comes Scrafty. So honestly, really bad switch by me here. I should have saved my Pelipper um, for the Scrafty. But hindsight's 2020. Didn't really see that coming. But either way, my Venusaur has some energy. 
I just need to eat this Scrafty to two moves. Sorry, three moves. Because it needs to land a foul play, burn a shield, and land another foul play. So they power punch first. That's their win con, I think. So kudos to them for finding it. Um, I, I would have had to shield it, though, for them to win this game. And we're going to be able to take out this Scrafty. And I guess the Jelson afterwards with a fine win. But yet another win. I believe on this day, I ended up with 19 wins and 6 losses. So with just 75 different Pokemon. So uh, we have Shadow Gramble. I think this is the last game. We have uh, Shadow Gramble, Vigoroth, and Ferrothorn. And we're met with Hypno in Hypno Double Dark. So this is kind of very tough. At least we got the Scrafty out of the back onto the Vigoroth. So yeah, these power punches hurt, but Vigoroth can win back switch versus Scrafty. So I'm just going to grab a, a shield here. And you're going to take Scrafty very low. Tough decision on what I want to come in on, but I'm pretty sure it is Granbull just to take it out. I, I didn't want to get power up punched. So either way, I'm going to swap into my Ferrothorn and they stay in and throw. I'm really hoping it's not fire punch, but it is fire punch. And in comes the Skarmory. So... Honestly, if I had just stayed in with my Gramble against the Hypno, I probably would have had a better shot. But I kind of messed up. I'm just surprised they brought in their Hypno into the Gramble in the first place. Why not bring the Skarmory? It's just such a nice matchup they have there. But worked out for them. Obviously, Gramble's not going to be able to take down both of these Pokemon at this point. So I'm just going to try and get to a crunch, see if it KOs. Very sad. A lot of my favorite Pokemon ended up losing... Like, I only lost six games. Shadow Victory Bell lost the game. Shadow Gramble lost the game. Shadow Beedrill lost the game. Shadow Flygon lost the game. Like, all these Pokemon I love to play all just lost games. I mean, it is what it is. I had a lot of fun doing this kind of challenge, though. I'd love to do it more in the future um, as well. Yeah, another three wins brings us to 19 and 6. Pretty solid first day, I think. Would have loved to win some more, but it's, uh, it's not how the cookie crumbles. Anyways, let me know if you like the new kind of editing style. I might go back to the old one just because it's a bit easier for me to edit. But if you guys, if I get some significant overwhelming comments about how you actually enjoy the new editing style, then I can do that no problem as well. Anyways, um, remember, if you've made it this far in the video, please hit that subscribe button. It really does help out. And I'm getting close to that 10,000 sub mark. It would be kind of cool to hit. It's a, it's a big goal of mine. So, anyways, thank you everyone for watching.